Okay, guys, so I'm going to adjust the governor back a little bit. So I, I, I made this a little bit too high, so it idles a little too high no matter how far back this is, just because of how it looks inside. So I figured while I'm doing this, I might as well make a little video showing you guys how I can adjust the governor, you know, with it in the truck with no real issues. So I got to pull off my wires, and I've got no power to anything, so I'm good. Return line needs to be pulled off, or at least you can get it out of the way, but it's covering the third screw down there. So there's three screws that holds this thing on. Now, I got my DeWalt here with a uh, Torx. Sometimes I've seen them be flatheads uh, screws. Some of them are Torx, like on this particular one. And um, so I'm just going to get in here. Loosen up all three screws. When I do this, I'm going to get maybe half a pint of diesel, leak out the back here, and you'll see it pour out. It's not a ton, but it does make, you know, some drippiness. So I'm just going to put my uh, uh, head, the what is it, cover aside. And if we take a look down in here, we can see the. Uh, throttle lever here uh, actuates that oh dang need more light uh, hmm. oh there we go okay so it actuates the assembly there in the middle you can see it moving back and forth the black rods attached to the uh, throttle and it it hits when it goes too far either way or the other on the um, there's a cut in the throttle linkage there so what I'm going to do is shorten up the governor and you can see down in there maybe you can see that the governor is comprised of a big long spring there a little short spring at the end and this big hex nut now thing is the he it's adjustable with it in the assembly like this you don't have to take out the stud right there at the back which is that rod coming forth here in order to get it out which makes life a lot easier so anyway I'm going to grab a 13 millimeter or half inch wrench and get in there. I'm using a stubby because it makes life a lot easier for me. I got some in the cab here. So I've got a nice little Harbor Freight stubby one half and it's just barely got enough clearance. If I was doing this very often I would uh, grind down the sides a little bit so I'd have some more room. But I'm just going to shorten this guy up and so I'm going to turn it. So shortening it up will uh, lower idle speed and um, reduce the maximum force you're going to put on it, reduce the maximum power. But, so I'm just going to bring it this way a little bit, try to get in there enough to get it, you know, maybe just a quarter of a turn. Probably like that. Not very much, doesn't take very much to do it. And then we'll see. That should have lowered my, my idle RPM. Now, the further you are in this uh, where you're adjusting it, it it's not linear because of how that uh, how that that linkage interacts so it's not like well okay if I take it another eighth of an inch it'll lower it by 300 rpm you sort of gotta play with it um, so putting this on here in this particular case my uh, uh, screws riding up top there because of the the negative terminal there so I've just got to sort of get it up top it won't quite sit down flush but I can thread it in reasonably easily just get them so they're threading in don't want to tighten everything down quite yet so I'm just gonna tighten it down and now I'm gonna put my uh, power fuel shutoff in the front, and the uh, high I, or the 
cold advance there in the back. Put my return line back on or else we're going to have fuel everywhere. Put my uh, throttle cable back on. And now we can uh, fire the sucker up and see what we get. Now you'll notice we don't have any fuel on top there. So people that would be saying, well, talk about air intrusion, blah, blah, blah. It's going to fire right off. Um, aside from the fact that it's cold because that's beyond the point of fuel entry. So that's just in the housing and we don't really need to have any fuel there in the housing. So I'm just gonna fire this sucker up. My um, cold advance on, give it some glow plugs. And uh, I disabled the high idle, so I'm just messing with them with my foot. Fires right off. No burbling, no nothing. Why? Because it's past the point of where it needs it. My current idle is uh, 760, low idle, which to me sounds like about where I want it. Uh, it was like at 830 before. And, well, it sounds kind of advanced because I got the high idle on, or the advanced on. You could tell. Turn that sucker off. The uh, spark from the switch turning off screws up my uh, display here, one of the downsides to it. have to reset it. And uh, now we're at 760 and it revs a bit more nicely. So anyway, so that's kind of how you adjust the governor if you need to. Um, that's just adjusting the, uh, the govern governed the overall length which when you adjust the overall length, what you're doing is you're adjusting where the where the where you're pushing back on the governor plate, how much pushback at a particular throttle position. So the longer it is, the more pushback, which means the higher the revs are, or the higher the more fuel is being added for a given RPM. Um, so you shorten it, lowers the idle, lowers the thing. Now the big spring there in the middle is the governor spring. So if you replace that with a stiffer spring or a, uh, like a spacer or two to, to stiffen it up, you'll increase the governed RPM, but if it's a length is the same, you aren't going to affect anything else. You'll just affect the governed RPM. Um, with the spring that I've got there, it's, uh, it's governing at about 3600, which to me is just fine. I might try making it 4000 later if I get this truck a little bit better, better tuned, smoother, doesn't have... It still seems like it has a little bit of a lope. It's pretty typical on these IDIs, though. But once it once it revs up, it feels smooth. I still anyway. Um, so that anyway, that's that's kind of what we're dealing with. So cool.